scene back on that Jacob's Ladder YouTube scene. Sabbath is almost over. Should be over in about 10 minutes. But I want you to look at look, look, look at the title of this video. And I watched some of it. I didn't watch all of it, but just a little bit of our watch. A little bit that I watch is just so disgusting. It's so disgusting, but at the same time, it's a blessing. And this is why I say it's a blessing. Because Everyone is focused so much on the white man and the heathens and our enemies. Everyone is focused on so many things, except that the Most High is exposing us. When I say us, I mean, no matter what camp you're in, what school you're in, what church you belong to, what school you're, you're in, whatever, whatever the case may be, wherever you learn and function as a unit or even as an individual serving the Most High, if you're not right, if your spirit is not right, if you don't have the proper understanding, if you're proud and boisterous and, and brutish and, and, and unclean in spirit and disrespectful, the Most High is exposing you. He's exposing us, rather, as a group. And, I, and, 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 and I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, be slow to speak and be quick to hear. Slow to speak and quick to hear. Fall back. Fall back and just watch these brothers make fools of themselves and, as, and appear as hypocrites and Pharisees. These brothers, uh, especially this group, this group are, 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 are a bunch of Pharisees, hateful, proud Pharisees. You understand? I'm not saying that applies to all the brothers or even all the brothers and sisters in the different groups. But in a lot of these groups, you have hateful, proud, arrogant Pharisees. You understand? To put a title like this, you are an arrogant man. You are, and to believe and follow this, you are a fool. You are a fool to follow anyone or any group that would have such a statement like this but can't back it up with scripture. This is John, the first chapter in the first verse. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh, meaning the word was Yahweh Shai, and he was with the Most High. The two are one in spirit. Two different entities. One is a father and one is a son. But they, they excuse me, they're one and the same in spirit. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh Shai, meaning the word. It says, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Fourth verse. For in him was life, and life was the light of men, which is important. So here you have the Son of the Most High, whose life excel, itself, which is truth and light and power, that's being prepared to be sent down in the world as flesh, as a representative of the Most High. Fifth verse, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And we see that today. The dark are the two thirds. The, the dark is the wicked, not just of us, but of the heathen. The dark is the evil that hates the light. Meaning Yahweh Shai. Sixth verse, there was a man sent from the Most High. Now we're going somewhere else. It's sixth verse. Now there was a man sent from the Most High. See? So now you can't be sent from the Most High unless the Holy Spirit is working with you. You can't be sent from the Most High unless the Holy Spirit is guiding you. And, it, and unless you are a man of the Holy Spirit, meaning in this truth. So the Bible is the truth. To be outside of the Bible is to be outside of the truth. Was John... The Baptist outside of the truth? Was he outside of the Holy Spirit? Did he uh, 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 forsake the Most High at any time? Did he reject the Most High at any time? There was a man, excuse me, there was a man sent 
from the Most High, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness. Again, the same came for a witness by the Most High to bear witness of the light. What light? The light we read about in the first three verses. The same light that was with the Most High. That if you take on the same spirit of the light, then you're with the Most High. The light, that's the truth. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men, see that? That all men through him might believe. Believe who? The Most High in the words of wisdom and righteousness that came from the Most High. So John had this task. Men saw the spirit on John. John was in the truth and he brought other people into the truth. He was paving and opening the way to a better way. The better way was Yahweh Shai. He didn't take Yahweh Shai's spot. He opened the doorways to Yahweh Shai. That's what he was. Eight verse. He was not the light because the light was Yahweh Shai, the sun. So John is saying that John was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. You have to be in the Holy Spirit to do that. Don't we go out in the streets and the highways and byways in the spirit of truth and righteousness and bear witness of the light? Yahweh Shai? Don't we say that that's the true king and that's our leader? The light? Ninth verse. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So John didn't have that light. <laughs> Unbelievable. Check it out. That's where you got to go to prove what love thy neighbor is. That's your love thy neighbor precept. You just read it. It's not. Okay. All right. Anything else? Lock you up? A lot, sir. Okay, Murat. Come on, God, sir. <laughs> the precept where it says, should we look for another? But John the Baptist. Oh, John the Baptist. Come on. That's what you need. John the Baptist was not in the truth. John the Baptist. So from what we just read, is John the Baptist in the truth? From what we just read, is John the Baptist in the truth? Knew that the truth was real. Knew that Christ was the king who was foretold to come. How does that even make sense? He knew the truth was real, but he wasn't in the truth. What verse backs that up? How does that even make sense? If the scripture says clearly that in the sixth verse, there was a man sent from the Most High whose name was John. So John knew of the truth, but at the same time he was sent from the Most High, sent by the Holy Spirit, pushing the Holy Spirit in Yahweh Shai. How does that make sense? But John the Baptist this never, he never followed Christ. Although being the cousin of Christ, remember John the Baptist's mother and Christ's mother were both two Levite sisters, blood sisters together as well, right? And so John the Baptist and Yahweh were. So John the Baptist was cousin to Yahweh Shai. Bear that in mind. Where it says, should we look for another? But John the Baptist. Oh, John the Baptist. Come on, that's what you need. John the Baptist was not in the truth. John the Baptist knew that the truth was real, knew that Christ was the king who was foretold to come. But John the Baptist never, he never followed Christ. Although being the cousin of Christ, remember John the Baptist's mother. Also being the cousin of of Christ, listen to what he's saying now. And Christ's mother were both two Levite sisters, blood sisters together as well, right? And so John the Baptist and Yahweh were first cousins. Christ from the tribe of Judah the Lion, um, uh, Mary, John the Baptist from the tribe of Levi the Lots, okay? And they were blood cousins, first cousins. So he knew Christ, and remember, Christ was turning water into wine at the family functions. Christ was at a wedding with his mother. Now, he, now, now stop. He said that John the Baptist was not in the truth and that 
Christ, Yahweh Shai, and John were first cousins. This is Luke 1 verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Whose birth? The birth of John the Baptist, whose mother was Elizabeth. You understand? Let's go up a little bit more. It says, but the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard. So the Most High was dealing with Zacharias. The Spirit of the Most High was dealing with this couple. For thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So the angel, who's in the Spirit of the Most High, is speaking to Zacharias, as well as Elizabeth, Zacharias' wife, who are also in the Spirit of the Most High, saying they're going to bear a son named John. 14 verse, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. 15 verse, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. The, not, the title of this video is John the Baptist was not in the truth. Don't you have to be of the Holy Spirit to be in the truth? 15 verse again. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel, he shall, excuse me, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their power. <laughs> you see this? 17 verse and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to turn the hearts of the fathers meaning the spirits of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom and the just excuse me and the disobedient to wisdom of the just and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Does this sound like a man that's not in the truth? Does this sound like that at all? Let's go. He turned water into wine. So people in Christ's family knew that this guy had the power and they knew who his father was, Joseph. He showed all of the signs that he was who the house of David and the tribe of Judah was waiting for. So John the Baptist was one of the first people to know who he was because he was around him growing up in the same family. Does everyone understand? And that's why he said, give me the priest that I'm looking for first. I'm, uh, there's one that come after me upon whose shoes I am not worthy to loosen from his feet. He knew that from seeing the miracles of Christ at the weddings. Does that, does, 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 the, does the Bible say that? Didn't the Bible say that the Lord was going to put the spirit on him? Or did he learn this from seeing the miracles? Like this liar is saying right here. <laughs> Two separate things are being said. He's saying that John knew the Christ and knew who he was and basically followed who he was because he saw the miracles. But then the scripture says that the spirit was on John the Baptist. 17th verse again, Luke, the first chapter in the 17th verse, it says, and he shall go before, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. See that? The spirit and power of Elias. Understand? 15th verse, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not see how shall I do the miracles and then be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Most High put the Holy Spirit on him, even from his mother's womb. <laughs> How could you get around that? How could you get around that? Around the village, he knew him, and he knew what he could do. All right? Pull that phrase up for me quickly, okay? It's in the book of, I want to say Matthew, it could be one. Upon whose feet, whose, uh, not shoes, his shoes, I'm not worthy to lose him, this fine boy. So I guess, sir. Uh, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Matthew 3 and 11, go. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John the Baptist talking to his disciples. And John the Baptist had a large congregation of his own. Way larger than the congregation of Christ. And there was a lot of them. And Herod was absolutely against him because he was turning the people to hate 
the Sadducee and Pharisee. He was, he was starting a revolution by telling the people that the Sadducee and Pharisee were wicked and they were sinners and that the people should go into the water, wash themselves in the Jordan River in compliance with Leviticus the 15th chapter as being a people who were unclean. Now they would wash themselves. Is, is that true? Is that true that he was baptizing them in compliance of, Levit of Leviticus the 15th chapter? Physical uncleanness versus spiritual uncleanness and repentance. Is that really true? I can't believe this dude is even teaching. Selves ...and be clean. And so he had the people come out and teach them and wash them in water. And, and then they would consider themselves people who formerly were unclean, but now were clean. It was a teaching tool. It was a way to show the people now they can change. Everyone understands, right? So this is what he said about washing in water. Keep going. But he that cometh after me, read it from the top. Come on, come. I indeed baptize, baptize you with did water. You, did John the Baptist baptize with water? Indeed, he most definitely did. He said it. I indeed baptize you with water. Go ahead. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Unto repentance, meaning the whole reason I'm washing everyone in water that comes out and follows me is because I want you to repent of your sins, meaning I want you to stop, stop breaking the law, which is what repentance means. The act of repenting is to be someone who was unclean. Was that the main message? We read it early. Was that the main message uh, why John came on the scene? Was that the main message or was it different? Again, John 1 verse 6, there was a man sent from the Most High whose name was John. The same man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. To bear witness of the light. I'm not saying he didn't push repentance and teach repentance, but the main thing was to bear witness of the light. And this is what I've been saying for a minute. Yahweh Shai is not being uplifted in a lot of these brothers, schools, churches, classes, videos. Not being uplifted. But the main mission, we're reading it. It's not, the main mission is not what he's saying. The main mission of John was this. The same came for a witness to bear, excuse me, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. A verse. He was not the light, meaning John was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. To bear witness of the light. Very simple. Who was doing something that would defile themselves. Now they wash themselves and they go and now they're clean. Which is directly from Leviticus, the 15th chapter. See, it's not, the scriptures don't say that. The scriptures do not say that. It doesn't say that. He was hoping that everyone who came out and dipped in the water would come out of that water and be changed. That was his goal. It failed. He, you understand? he said it failed. But now we, we, read, we read earlier, it, that's not true. It didn't fail. You know, it didn't fail. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, back again. It says, um, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord. See? So did he fail? Many of the children shall be turned. Many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord. And he shall go before, excuse me, and he shall go before him in spirit and in, in and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom, excuse me, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we do to make ready a people, the children of Israel prepared for the Lord, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Isn't that what we do? Or maybe we're not in the truth. But judging from what he's speaking, he's not in the truth. So did John fail? John didn't fail. John was 
a great man. John was a great man. I don't know what he's talking about or what scriptures he's reading. This is Matthew 11, verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women. So John was born of a woman. This lost soul was born of a woman. Yahweh was born of a woman. I was born of a woman. But the Bible says, verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women. See that? Among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Many men were born of woman, women. Solomon was born of a woman. But the scripture still says there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding he that is the in the excuse me, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him or he. That's for us. Understand? But on earth at that time, even to now, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So did John fail like this liar is saying? Like this proud, arrogant liar is saying? Let's go. Then it did not work. It did absolutely nothing. Herod cut his head off and he's gone and his movement is gone and that's that. So is that true? Is that true, what he just said? Or is the scriptures true? But they say at the ISUPK that they, they're the home of the truth. That they have the truth. That there's all other camps and schools are teaching lies. Keep going. But he that cometh after me. But he that cometh after me. Go ahead. Is mightier than I. Read that again. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. John the Baptist building, this cat coming after me is greater than me. Why? Because he was at the weddings and around and seeing his cousin do things that only the future king of Israel could do. And he knew that he was a descendant of King Solomon. Because this... <laughs> Where's this thing? Where's this back? How does he back that up? <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> it was his first cousin. He knew like Mary knew. Mary went to her son and said, said, we have no more wine. And he said, mother, how long shall I suffer? You? And then he went ahead and turned that water into wine for his mom. She knew that he could do it. His family knew he had this power and knew who his father was. Keep going. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He said, I'm not worthy to carry the shoes. You know what's sad? A lot of you don't, you really don't see that the Lord is exposing these brothers. That the same way you got more earthquakes, the same way you have more floods, you got this corona disease, you have a lot of diseases happening. You have um, people with all kinds of problems proving we're, proving we're in the last days. You can't see that you who are, who are somewhat in the faith, you can't see the Most High is embarrassing a lot of these different camps, schools, and, and churches. You can't see that. You really can't see that. You can't see how absolutely stupid this brother looks. That this is this. I, I put this together in like like less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. Check it out. Of the man that comes after me, he's greater than me. Keep going. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And he knew that the one that came after him would not baptize with water, but he would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Was the one that came after him Yahweh? Was he baptized? Was he baptized? And who baptized him? Who baptized him? This is John negating water baptism out of his own mouth. And he is the founder of water baptism. Now he's dead. His movement is gone. He's the founder of water baptism? Okay. And now sinners and heathens have taken water baptism for their own. And now a ton of homosexuals dip themselves in water and come out and, be, and become the best little wives they can be in San Francisco. After they've been baptized right. in the everlasting LGBTQ. Keep going. Come on, God. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and with fire. And with fire. Ooh, we. What does that fire mean? He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We can break down the fire. What is the Holy Spirit, first of all? Malachi. Um, I don't think it's all that. After the fire. 
What does it mean that you'll baptize you the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, these brothers don't have the Holy Spirit. Let me go up a little ahead because I'm not going to waste time with this. I want to go to the gym, man. Somewhere. Some den of iniquity. I could find, if you're an alcoholic, you know how far I could go back in your family to find alcohol itself. Where? To put, to back to Babylon? I could go back. Where could I go? To Egypt? What a joke. What a joke, man. <laughs> Look at the arrogancy on this dude's face, man. Look at this dude. You got the coordinates. That's the, this is the time to use it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, Lock out. You have it? He said, Sin was scarlet. Though thy sins be as scarlet. Correct. That's one. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, the other. That's right. How do you know that? You're on it. You're right there. Just cross over. <laughs> He's walking right up to the line. It's the simple answer. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is. A <laughs> Listen, brothers, stop following these brothers, man. The, 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 the UPK and these, these different brothers, they got some good brothers in there. They just don't know any better. But just like how we was hoodwinked and brainwashed in One West, the first UPK, the original UPK, he, these brothers was brainwashed today. They brainwashed today. They actually, I mean, you have to be really arrogant to put such a video up. You got to be really arrogant. Let me see if there's any more. Because, I mean, I, I mean, come on. Thanks, because you were taught. That's why you said the word of God earlier, right? Because you were taught it. If you were to watch someone be cleansed with the Holy Spirit, you would watch someone be taught. That's how Christ cleans. Christ does not clean with water. It doesn't work. Ask John the Baptist. He's telling you here. It doesn't work. He did it. What else could he do? He didn't know what Christ knew. He couldn't teach what Christ taught. He damn sure couldn't make sins go away. All he could do is give you a mock repentance, which is what baptism is. A mock repentance. But yet the scriptures say something completely different. Let's go back again. Let's go back again. It says, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither war, neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And many, many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. See that? Many of the children he shall turn to the Lord their God. So how is that a mock repentance? The Most High says, we're going to do the same thing. How, how is that a mock repentance? I don't understand that at all. Turn many of the children of Israel to the Most High. This is Daniel, the uh, 12th chapter, in the first verse, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth up for the children of thy people, the children of Israel. And there shall be a, excuse me, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since was a nation even to the same time. And at that time shall thy people be delivered. Everyone that should be found written in the book. So there are some of us who are ordained to be written in the book of life because of our good deeds, our righteousness. But here's the main point. It says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's brothers like this dude right here. That's brothers like this dude right here. You understand? Third verse. And they that be wise, see that? And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness, see that? They that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Didn't we read about that a little while ago in the book of Luke? Didn't we read that? Hmm? Didn't we just read that? Turn many to righteousness. We just read that. I mean, I mean, how hard is this? How hard is this? Tell me how hard is this? <laughs> it don't make no sense. But he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. So this, just like in Daniel, it said, many shall turn many to unrighteousness to righteousness. But here it's saying, 
He shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel, he shall turn to their God. So how was he teaching a mock righteousness like this fool is saying? How was that? How is that possible? It's a play repentance. It's a mock repentance. And he tried and all of his disciples left and went into the world. And that was that. It was over. You know? All of his disciples left and went into the world. But we just read. <laughs> How did, we just, you saw what we just read? How's <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Again, 16 verse, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. But he's saying they all went into the world. They, his, his, his followers went into the world. That's right. How do you know that? You're on it. You're right there. Just cross over. <laughs> He's walking right up to the line. It's the simple answer. Because you were taught it. That's why you said the word of God earlier, right? Because you were taught it. If you were to watch someone be cleansed with the Holy Spirit, you would watch someone be taught. That's how Christ cleans. Christ does not clean with water. It doesn't work. Ask John the Baptist. He's telling you here. It doesn't work. He did it. What else could he do? He didn't know what Christ knew. He couldn't teach what Christ taught. He damn sure couldn't make sins go away. All he could do is give you a mock repentance, which is what baptism is. It's a play repentance. It's a mock repentance. And he tried, and all of his disciples left and went into the world, and that was that. It was over. Do you understand? But he knew there was a better way, just not a way that he could do. A better way was to be able to teach someone. And that teaching changes someone, which I'm telling you, Ark, I'll say it again. It's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle after 400 years to be able to say something to someone that turns them off of the path they have been on before birth. If grand, if you if you grew up a crackhead or, or a drug addict, you know how many people. Hey, listen, man, I'm done. I mean, <laughs> to be this, this this to get caught up into this group, you you got to be out of your mind. You got to be out of your mind. And they and 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 they tell us that we don't have the truth. To me, it looks like these brothers that they don't have the truth, man. To me, it looks like these brothers, they don't have the truth. Yet they say we don't have the truth. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Again, Matthew 11, verse 11, it says, Among them that are born of women. Again, it says, Among them that are born of women. Solomon. Uh, I was shy. Not even y'all shy. Solomon, this brother, me, you, uh, Luke. You know, Matthew, it says, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. See that? A greater than John the Baptist. There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Yet this man says he was not in the truth. And a lot of you idiots, and I, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I got to say it like this. A lot of you idiots, you're going to follow this man, General Johanna, and men like this. Shame, shame, shame. It's a little quiet side now. Don't be so dumb and gullible. <laughs> the one West Days is done. Shalom.